Hey guys, CB Super. I just put out this video, a square to a circle in DaVinci Resolve. I was having some issues with the actual square not coming out as perfectly square. And in the comments, you guys had a lot of great input in that the square or the rectangle mask is actually based off of the resolution, which makes sense as a lot of things in Fusion are based off of the resolution. You guys suggested that you just make a square background and that will automatically make the square perfectly square which is absolutely true. So this is gonna be a new series where I'm just gonna do quick tips. Most of them are probably gonna be from your guys' comments or just things that I find that are kind of interesting. So what he is saying is that if I was to bring in just a regular rectangle mask, you'll notice that it's not perfectly square. Now I can try and get it perfectly square. And the reason that it's not going to be perfectly square right off the bat is because it's, it's actually mimicking the resolution of the actual screen here. Now, not to say that it's the exact resolution, it's actually just the ratio of height to width. But here's something interesting. So I could make a background. Let me go ahead and disconnect these for right now. And let's say I was to take this background and I could change this auto resolution and I can go from 1920. I can just go ahead and turn this into 1920. Well, that makes it a square. And I can go ahead and delete this rectangle and click on this background and then turn, make a new rectangle. Well, you'll notice that the rectangle is now in a perfect square as is the actual background. So that's cool. Another way we can actually do this though is just by clicking on the rectangle, loading it up, and then you can actually come over here and where it says output size, you just change this to custom uh, make sure that use frame formatting settings is not clicked on because that's just going to automatically default to whatever the project size is or whatever's coming into it through the background. And then it's just a matter of you can go ahead and type in 1920 here and that's going to do essentially the same thing. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, whenever this plugs into, let's say we bring in another background though, and then when this rectangle plugs into this background, you're gonna see that it is still gonna elongate, and that is because it's going to uh, get stretched out due to the resolution. If we wanted to just use this as its own shape layer, what we could do is we could actually bring in a merge node. This background holding the right mouse button, I can go ahead and drag it and drop it, put it in the background, take this rectangle, drag and drop it, put it in the foreground, and now you'll notice that we'll still get the background as 1080p, but the rectangle is still a square. So that's pretty cool. And then again, you guys have probably seen this several times where I can come in here and if I start changing this around by itself, uh, that's going to get kind of annoying. If I wanted to keep it as a perfect square, all I have to do is come to the height or width. Either one really works. Type in the equal sign. And then um, I grab this little plus sign here and I can just drop it on top of the width and all that's going to do is it's going to add the word width which just means that the height is now going to be attached to the width so if I move the width it's also going to move the height so that's just if I wanted to make it into a perfect square and keep it as a perfect square but I'm going to go ahead and command z out of that because I don't really need it to do that there's something interesting here that you can really do and this is kind of just an additional tip if you come over here where it says solid click on the solid it's going to disappear, but when you jack up the border width just a little bit, now you'll notice that you get this outline or you get a square outline. And there's something pretty cool down here. You'll notice there's position and length. So I can animate these over time. If I start to play with the length, it's going to change it just like if we were using a paint node and using the write-on effect. But then if you animate the position, you'll notice that it actually moves. Well, that's pretty cool. Think about all of the motion graphics things we can do with this. And of course, if I want to, I can also come down here to the corner radius and I can kind of turn this into a circle. And now I, as I move the position, I can get a really neat animation, but it only goes to one. But just because it only goes to one doesn't mean it'll only go to one. I can always double click in here, maybe type in 10. And now that's going to expand the amount that I can actually animate it. So now I can go ahead and I can create some pretty neat animations by moving the length, maybe making it smaller. So now if I was to, if I want to animate it, I can. All I have to do is click on the little diamond. I can move the time slider up to the end of the slider and I can move the position all the way to the end of say 16. And now you get like a really cool animation. So think about all the motion graphics animations you could probably do with this. And the neat thing is that you can even change this length up and you can see in real time what the difference in the animation will be. So lots of different things you can do with this. Um, pretty exciting. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Just by dropping the length all the way down, you now have like a rotating dot. 
So anyways, that was just a quick tip. I hope this helps you, some of you guys out. I know it helped me out a lot. Um, I appreciate all of the comments that you guys leave. I read through each and every comment. Going forward, uh, if you guys leave any tips in the comments, I'll be sure to hopefully be able to make a video on it. If it's something that I think everybody needs to know, I get a lot of questions on a lot of different topics. Some things I know about, some things I do not know about. I'm learning a lot from you guys, just as you may be learning from me. So I really do appreciate all the comments that you guys leave. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.